expert sponsor on this break, Country Companies Insurance. Assembly Hall takes us to quarterfinal game number three, featuring Bradley Bourbonnet against Rockford Boylan. And to give us some insight on Rockford Boylan, here from the Rockford Register star is Ed Glenner, one of the standout reporters for that newspaper, and he'll give us some insight on Boylan. First off, though, about Bradley Bourbonnet. Let's find a little bit of how, how the Boilermakers got here, and they are under veteran coach Vern Sloan, having lost only twice this year, uh, the very difficult Sicka South Conference. They're located down in northeastern Illinois, just outside of Kankakee. Bradley Bourbonnet's road to Champaign started off by knocking off the pesty porters of Lockport in the sectional semifinal, and then in the sectional final defeated the Tigers of Joliet West by one point on a controversial last second play, and then in the super sectional defeated Hillcrest by 25 out in the East Aurora super sectional. They are a team that is led by one man. He does it at both ends of the floor. In red, number 24 is Chris Candy. He's going to the University of Illinois, so he'll be on his home floor, his future home floor, but every floor seems to be his on both ends of the court. So he can rebound, he can go inside, and he can get it up and give it to the other players. And this is not a one-man team. They can't go outside to other players like number 20, Matt Berlin, and stick it up from three-point land. And when they need Chris Candy, he does answer the bell. Now, meanwhile, Boylan has been answering the bell all season long including their big win earlier in the season over at the time number one ranked and undefeated Chicago King. Now the Titans are out of Northern Illinois, of course, in Rockford. They'll be wearing their green and white. 29-1 this year under Coach Steve Gores. Now as we look at the Boylan Road to Champaign, it started off with Geneseo and of course that LaSalle Peru game and Elgin Larkin was a difficult one, but they got over that step. The toughest yeah. one there, Ed? Uh, the Geneseo game. That was their first game without starting guard Lee Lampley, who was suspended. Um, they didn't have time to set up a half-court defense or offense. They had to work on that. Against LaSalle, Peru, they got things in gear. And Larkin, the 30-7 to run in the second half carried into victory there. Well, we'll take a look at some of the highlights of Boylan, and we'll find out what makes the Titans go. Put-back buckets, such as one Michael Slaughter here was on a rebound of a miss by John Hernandez. Mendez, then feed inside to Slaughter from Bill Benz for a dunk. Big crowd at the Metro Center, 8,700. Another easy bucket underneath and by Hernandez. And then John Hernandez going to Eastern Illinois, hits from three-point land. Boylan gets it rolling in the second half. Then Darrell Banks underneath again to Tim Hobson, who now starts with Ladley's absence, so he's going in for the Boylan. I love the way they share the ball. They really push it around to each other and really become, it becomes a great team effort. That's one of the things I like about Boylan. And we look at the starting lineups and we match those up and see how they are. There's certainly several key matchups that you may want to watch when you're watching this game and in the middle of your screen, the 6'8 Gandy against the 6'6 Slaughter. My question, can Slaughter stay with Gandy at both ends of the floor? Oh, I believe so. Slaughter's fairly strong. He's listed at 6'6". He jumps much higher than that. He may play like 6'8 or 6'9". They talk about Gandy's slenderness, although Gandy just told me he can bench press about 205, slaughter strong also. So that'll be a good match up there in the middle. Well, when we look at the team comparisons, you'll see, obviously, by that statistic, that the height advantage is definitely with Boylan. But one area that Bradley Bourbonnet can't get hot with, we saw in their highlights, they can put up the three. They can be very accurate from the free throw line, and Gandy really shows up in crunch time. But all those X's still point to Boylan. Yeah, Boylan gets a lot of put-back buckets with Hobson and Slaughter underneath. Three-pointers, we originally maybe would give that advantage to Boylan, except Boylan no longer has Lampley, and he was .425 from the three-point range. Free throws, Boylan, I would say, is a so-so team. Rebounding, Boylan plays much better, positions well, plays much taller, excuse me, than, than their opponents do. So, um, as far as overall matchups, I would say Boylan's also their overall quickness, too. They're the full-court press. They're they're very acrobatic team, very athletic team. And very briefly, before we go out of this segment, veteran Vern Sloan, coaching Bradley Bourbonnet, and, of course, uh, one of the young Turks and Steve Gores. Well, as far as the coaching goes, I guess Vern Sloan maybe comes from more coaching pedigree. Uh, his father won a state title with the Grange Lions in 53. Steve Gores, on the other hand, won his 400th career victory right. against 
against LaSalle Peru in the sectional final. Steve has a tremendous record. Both coaches are about seven, about 750 winning percentage for their career. That must be, uh, Ed, while they both look so young. Ed Glunder, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. We will be back to continue our Road to Champagne quarterfinal matchup preview. Coming up next, it's Stevenson against Richwoods. The Road to Champagne continues from Assembly Hall after this time out from our network sponsor, the Dairy Farm Families of Illinois and Wisconsin. of the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana as the Illinois High School Association presents the 21st annual Boys Class AA Basketball Finals. And hello again, everyone. I'm Joe Passion, back down here on the floor of Assembly Hall as we move into the second session of the Boys Class AA quarterfinal round. Now, first, before we preview tonight's games, let's go back and review today's earlier games. Top-ranked and unbeaten Proviso East, did come back and hold on, defeating Collinsville 53-51 to to move on to tomorrow morning's semifinal game against Chicago Public League champion Westinghouse, who had the battle but stayed on top in a big way against East Aurora. So those are the pairings you'll see tomorrow. Now, of course, to find out who the other semifinalists are going to be, we've got to talk about today's game. And tonight's game will feature Bradley Bourbonnet against a team that comes in here ranked number three in the state, Rockford Boylan. First off, the visiting team are the Bradley Bourbonnet Boilermakers of Coach Vern Sloan. At 28-2 this year, out of the difficult Sicka South Conference, this is a ball club that comes out of the Kankakee area from Bourbonnet, Illinois. The road to Champaign for the Boilermakers, ranked 11th in the state coming into this Elite Eight, knocking off the Lockport Porters and then Joliet West in a controversial win in the sectional final at Sandburg, and then their super sectional defeat of Hillcrest at, ironically, the East Aurora super sectional. Now, the home team here today in this third quarter final game will be Rockford Boylan and the Titans out of, of course, the Rockford area. And they are one of the only Catholic schools here in this double-A final. 29-1 under Coach Steve Gores out of Rockford, Illinois. The road to Champaign for the Titans, who are ranked third in the state, started off by knocking off Geneseo, then LaSalle, Peru, and a big victory over Elgin Larkin in the super sectional, and that gets them here to the Elite Eight for the fifth time. And to set the table for tonight's tip-off, let's send it to center court, where Dan Roan and Kenny McReynolds are standing by. All right, Joe Passion, thank you very much, and welcome once again to Champaign. Game three out of four here today in the AA Boys Basketball Tournament. Uh, game three featuring an attack of the killer bees, Kenny. Bradley Bourbonnet and Rockford Boylan. First, we'll talk some about Bradley. A uh, team with a lot of weapons, but there's no question what the top weapon is. He's Chris Gandy. Well, Chris Gandy may be the future here at the University of Illinois. Let's face it, he's going to play for the Illini. This young man leads the Boilermakers. 20 points per contest, nine and a half rebounds. This young man can play the game. Watch the defensive block by Chris Gandy. He's a little skinny, Dan, but this young man gets up and down the floor. Watch the turnaround, lean in, jumper. This young man knows how to play the game of basketball. He can do it on both ends of the floor. Good rebound right there. This young man could be a force in the game tonight. And they can also do so many other things outside of Gandy. Of course, you also get the outside jump shot. And the coach of the uh, Bradley Bourbonnet Boilermakers, is uh, Vern Sloan, and Vern talked a bit about what it's going to take his team to win this game tonight. Well, that would be a uh, key matchup. If uh, Slaughter can neutralize Gandy, then uh, we would be in trouble, I would think. But uh, we've got other weapons. We've got guards that can shoot the ball, so we're not... We have other weapons. Where do you see is the key for this game, then? Well, I, I mentioned earlier, rebounding and getting back on defense. You know, you, it's not a complicated game. They like to run, and they, in the run, they got to get the rebound. Then uh, we've got to get our, some offensive boards, and we have to prevent them from getting second shots at their end of the floor. That's Bradley coach Vern Sloan. He'll have a tough task tonight against the Boylan team, Kenny, that's lost only one game all season long. Well, it will be very, very difficult to win this game tonight. But I tell you what, there's a young man I like on the uh, team, Tim Hobson. This young man, he was 6-for-6 six six in the last super sectional, Dan. We know Hobson can play the game. 
Tim Hobson. Rockford Boylan has undergone some uh, internal strife during the course of the season and has overcome it to go 29 and 1, as we said. Hobson, a terrific game in the super sectional, Kenny. No, he was 6 for 6 in the super sectional. You're going to look at Michael Slaughter. Slaughter is going to have a good ball game, I have the feeling, tonight. As you see, Johnny Hernandez also can play the game of basketball. But we talked about Hobson. He was 6 for 6 in the super sectional. He comes into this ball game red hot, Dan, and you couldn't pick a better time than the state finals to start getting it on a good streak. Now the coach of this ball club is Steve Gores, who's had a few stops in his coaching career around the state of Illinois, but he's never had a victory here in the Assembly Hall, and he'd sure like to get one tonight. Here are his thoughts about that. Well, I feel a little bit like Tom Davis from Iowa coming into Assembly Hall. You know, <laughs> you know it hasn't been a very fortunate place for me uh, in our state tournament appearances, but. Oh, we have a good ball club, and each year, uh, you know, in each game is certainly a different reflection in, in, on your, uh, you know, your, your coaching uh, uh, experience. And I, I think that uh, our team is right tonight to play an outstanding game against Bradley, and uh, our kids are loose and ready to play. And it's, it's more of a veteran team I've had. Uh, we have uh, three, actually four players that have been on the varsity for three years. While both these teams have had great seasons, Kenny, there's a marked contrast in the way they play basketball, and we'll take a look at that as we look at the keys to tonight's game, brought to you by Milk that does a body good, and by the people who produce milk, the well, dairy farm families of Illinois and Wisconsin. Sorry about that, Dan, but I think <laughs> Bradley has to handle the pressure. You know they'll get pressed, and you, they want to get the ball inside to Gandy. But Borland, they want to make it a high-scoring game, up-tempo, because they average 85 points per contest. They want to get up and down the floor, but on defense, they want to put pressure on the perimeter so Gandy can't get a good look so look for them to put a lot of pressure on the perimeter tonight all right run and gun on one side control tempo on the other should be a good basketball game here tonight Rockford Boylan and Bradley Bourbonnet will tip it off in just a moment one of your network sponsors country companies insurance Sponsors are Country Companies Insurance, bringing you state tournament action for more than 20 years. The Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin and Illinois, who remind you to drink milk. It does a body good. And Toyota. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Welcome back to the Assembly Hall. Dan Roan and Kenny McReynolds set to bring you game three of the quarterfinal round of the AA Boys High School Basketball Tournament. Before we set the starting lineups and get this game underway, let's enjoy tonight's national anthem, sung by soloist Lauren Lee of Downers Grove South High School, accompanied by the Pontiac High School Band.
Bradley Bourbonnet and Rockford Boylan. Let's meet the starting lineups with public address announcer Steve Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the coaches and players for this third quarterfinal round game featuring the Boilermakers of Bradley Bourbonnet High School entering this game with a record of 28 and 2 and the Titans of Rockford Boylan who come into this game with a record of 29 and 1. First, here are the non-starters from Bradley. Number 10, a 6'1 junior, Mike Cole. Number 12, a 5'9 junior, Bill Poole. Number 22, a 5'8 junior, Tim Dalton. Number 30, a 6'2 junior, Jason DeYoung. Number 40, a 6'4 junior, Bill Harless. Number 50, a 5'11 sophomore, James Terrell. And number 52, a 6'3 senior, Ken Duchesne. And now let's meet the non-starters from Rockford Boylan. Number three, a six-foot junior, Tim Gores. Number four, a 5'11 sophomore, injured and unable to play tonight, Lee Lampley. Number 21, a 6'1 junior, Dana Kiley. Number 22, a 6'3 junior, Brian Feedy. Number 30, a 5'9 senior, Tim Bailey. Number 33, a 6'4 junior, Greg Pintos. Number 35, a 5'10 junior, Dana Walker. Number 40, a 6'0 junior, Andy Honkamp. And number 50, a 6'4 senior, Brian McNett. And now, introducing tonight's starting lineups. At forward for Bradley Bourbonnet, a 6'4 junior, 42, Darren Pickering. At forward for Rockford Boylan, a 6'4 senior, 52, Tim Hobson. At the other forward for Bradley, a 6'1 junior, 32, Mark Cole. At the other forward for Boylan, a 6'4 junior, number 25, Bill Binns. At center for the Boilermakers, a 6'8 senior, number 24, Chris Gandy. At center for Rockford Boylan, a 6'7 senior, number 55, Michael Slaughter. At one of the guards for Bradley, a six-foot senior, number 20, Matt Berlin. And at one of the guards for the Titans, a six-four senior, number 23, Darrell Banks. At the other guard for Bradley Bourbonnet, a 5'10 junior, number 34, Sunu Thomas. And at the other guard for Rockford Boylan, a six-one senior, number 10, Johnny Hernandez. And now, let's meet the coaches. First, for Bradley Bourbonnet, assistant coaches Mike Owens and Walt Wall. And the head coach in his eighth season is Vern Sloan. And here it is for Boylan, assistant coaches Dave Stockton and Ted Knudsen. And the head coach in his 12th season at Boylan, Steve Gores. The 29 and 1 Rockford Boylan against 28 and 2 Bradley Bourbonnet will tip it off in just a moment. One of your network sponsors, the Toyota Dealers of Illinois. Bradley Bourbonnet and Rockford Boylan line up like this and watch that matchup in the middle. Chris Gandy against Michael Slaughter. 
That one will be the key matchup in this game tonight. As far as the team comparison goes, Kenny Boylan, a better shooting team, but Bradley Bourbonnet has got some pluses on their side, too. Yeah, they really do. They can uh, put up the three, three point shots and, of course, free throws. They're an outstanding free throw shooting club. Bradley will open up with a basketball. And I'll tell you what, you could shoot a shotgun down Main Street in either one of those two towns and not hit anybody. They are all here tonight. A lot of Gandy green. had it blown out of there by Hobson and out of bounds. Bradley Bourbonnet will hang on, but an inauspicious debut for the Illini recruit down in the paint. <laughs> well, you can't get them all. A little hit fake may have helped. Number 20 with a basketball. Bradley Bourbonnet is Matt Berlin. A near steal there. Try to pick it up. Back outside we go, and Gandy's loose in the lane for two. Well, that's what they want to do, is you listen to all the Bradley fans, and there are a lot of them. They want to get the ball down low to Chris Gandy. Matchup zone defense by Bradley. Johnny Hernandez is number 10, almost threw it away. Hernandez, a great athlete, captain of 12-1 football team up at Boylan this year as the quarterback. Near turnover, Sulu Thomas on the floor. They've got the bust out, and this is Berlin for two. Well, a good team will capitalize on other teams' mistakes, and they come away with the two points. Three-point shot on the way, no good by Darrell Banks, and a quick start for the Turtles in this game, Kenny. The slower <laughs> tempo team, Bradley Bourbonnet, has the first two hoops and now has the basketball. And you see now they'll go down in a half-court game. They want to make it a slowdown game. They're in no hurry to run. Cut off of the baseline. Sue New Thomas' shot is short. The ball's tipped out and a bust out if they hurry with Johnny Hernandez. Rockford Boylan on the board. And that's their game, Dan. You know they love to run and gun. They will get up and down the basketball floor tonight. Rockford Boylan scores 85 points a game. They've been over 106 times this year. And Bradley scores at only 59 again. So they'd like to slow it down. Quite a contrast. Bill Bins after the steal. He's oh, undercut. He's okay, I believe, and he'll go up to the free throw line after he pulls himself up off the deck. Well, I tell you, Bill Bins had, had a great steal, Dan. He goes down court. Here's Bins. Now watch the contact. As people say basketball is not a contact sport. He slipped, but he's okay. Mark, Mark Cole. Cole. Yeah, Mark Cole picked up the foul, trying to run underneath him and knock the ball away as he went by. Underestimated the speed of Bill Benz, who missed the first free throw. Benz is a 63% shooter up there. Average is about eight points a game. And Berlin comes with some pressure. Berlin handles that without too much trouble. Darren Pickering. Trying to lob it to Gandy down low. Nice work. Gandy wound up wide open under the basket for his second basket. Well, he, had it, he was behind his man. All he had to do was lob the basketball to him. Ben's cross-court pass to Earl Banks, an all-stater. Three-point shot on the way, short. And Pickering hauls out the rebound for Bradley Bourbonnet. Good ball movement, nice defense by Slaughter. Banks had to change his shot. Nice defense by Berlin. Well, when he changed his shot, Dan, I think he lost control of it on the way up. Get past Berlin in the corner. Off the dribble. Had it blocked by Hernandez. And then re-stolen by Thomas. So back-to-back -back turnovers, and Bradley hangs on. should have it to Gandy. He didn't see him. Okay, now they need to reverse the basketball, Dan. A little push-off by Gandy and great weak side help by Bill Benz to make the steal. Beautiful weak side help by Bill Benz to come over and make the steal. Benz in the corner. The big man Slaughter touched for the first time. He's up, and he's got it. Michael Slaughter, who Steve Gore says, Kenny, is the most underrated player in the state, bar none. 
Well, he'll have a chance to prove what he's worth tonight going up against Dandy. Backdoor pass stolen away by Hernandez. Hernandez on the run. Pull up 15 footer is short and the rebound taken by Hernandez off the hands. What an athlete. Of Mark Cole and now a foul on the other side as Darren Pickering goes down hard. Well, Pickering going for the skip pass, Dan, and when you're in no man's land like that, now watch what I call no man's land. Like he's up in the air, he has nowhere to go but down on top of someone in a foul. It'll be Boylan's ball when we come back. 3.57 to go in the first quarter. 6-5, Bradley on top. One of your network sponsors, the Country Companies Insurance. This is Jackson with three. Jackson lets fly. Go! Jackson won the game! A limited number of original collector's March Madness videos still remain, now at the low, low price of $15. Relive all the exciting and incredible history of the first 80-plus years of the Illinois Boys High School Basketball Tournament. Remember, there is only a limited supply of these original collector's videos available. Purchase one at this year's state tournament or order now by mail. Shipping and handling are included in the incredible and final $15 offer. <laughs> Back in Champaign, game notes tonight. Bradley Bourbonnet at 11th ranking in the final regular season polls. Kenny and has not been to Champaign in a long, long time. Boylan, of course, a regular visitor, but not very often a winner. In fact, never under Steve Goer. Boy, that's tough. And there are your slam dunk finalists. The slam dunk competition this weekend in Class A and Double A will show you the finals as the weekend progresses. Meanwhile, back to action. Slaughter shot is knocked away inside. And Bradley comes away with it. Sunu Thomas on the dribble. Mark Cole. Here's Chris Gandy way outside. Well, you don't want Chris that far out. Matt Berlin. Boy, look at Gandy. That's an offensive foul. Yes. They got him. He had the head and the neck of Michael Slaughter. He had him in the neck hole. I guess it's all in the position. You well, have your arms out to try to make yourself some room down there. Maybe Slaughter just stuck his head in there. Oh, man. He drew the offensive foul. That's three team fouls already on Bradley and none yet on Rockford Boyle. Well, that's using your head, Michael. Hernandez. Three-pointer. Johnny Hernandez with five, and Rockford Boylan takes the lead, 8-6. Well, Rockford took 554 three-pointers in the regular season, so they will put him up. And they shot 37%, which means they're above average uh, in that category. Well, when you make 203. Steele, Darrell Banks to Bins. It's a two-on-one. Nice, nice rebound. Pass. Return pass to Slaughter for the dunk. Banks made it happen with the assist, and Michael Slaughter with the big finish. And that's the way you draw it up on the blackboard, Dan. You don't dribble the basketball, just one pass in the fast break. Come away with two points. Boylan 10-6, and Gandy hasn't touched the ball in a while. And another steal. But Bins had to heave it before he fell out of bounds, and it will go right back to Bradley Bourbonnet. Yeah, he was falling out of bounds before uh, he had control of the ball. And look at this, Borland on a 7-0 run. And they've done it with their defense. Good pressure defense, creating some offense from your defense. That's what coaches love. That's like killing two birds with one stone. Pickering couldn't handle the pass in the corner, and it's stolen away by Hobson. Here's Darrell Banks. Banks, long three, good! Banks on the board. It's 13-6, and that's a 10-0 run. Here's your defense, the good pressure in the backcourt. Inside two minutes for the opening period, and this game's beginning to heat up. Good fake by Cole. Up and good, and sent him up to the free throw line with a chance for three. Now, that's a big-time fake by Mark Cole, Dan. Good body control. Good fake, gets his man up in the air. Here it is again. Here's Cole at the free throw line. Nice head fake. And he gets the shot up, gets his man up in the air, and he's hit on the arm by Bill Bain. Vern Sloan told us yesterday that Mark Cole's his scrapper out on the floor. He's a fighter, hot-tempered. Sometimes he has to pull him out of the game to cool him down. I like guys like that. Every good team's gonna have one. 
See, now Bradley has to get back into their matchup zone. They get it inside to Hobson, but he's double teamed and in big trouble. And now a reach in foul call. And if it's Gandy, that's a quick two. I think it is Gandy. Well, Vern Sloan told him, hey, Chris, that's two. No more reach in. Here it is again. Now watch Gandy going down with the slap right there, trying to steal the basketball. Bradley. No shot. Oh, nice cut. Darrell Banks flashed to the goal. He's made the last two hoops. 15-8. Cole in the lane. Missed the short jump shot. And Bradley's hanging on. Pickering, though, threw it away. And Banks makes the steal. Well, Darrell Banks all over the place. I was just about to say, they say Michael Slaughter may be the most underrated player in the state. I've been impressed so far with Darrell Banks. Bins to Banks. Now Slaughter down in the post. He's got Bins for three. And Gandy's got the rebound. You know, Boylan is playing without its leading score. You may have seen Lee Lampley introduced there. I don't think he's injured, Kenny. What happened <laughs> with Lee is that he's broken a team rule and was uh, kicked off the team well, by Steve Gore. His pride is injured. <laughs> Darren Pickering on the board for the first time tonight, 15-10. So Lampley's missed the last three games, but Rockford has been able to regroup despite losing his 20 points a game. And that kid's only a sophomore. Heck of a player. Yeah, we'll hear a lot from him. Rockford, uncharacteristically, is going to hold the ball until the end of the quarter. We're inside 20 seconds. Rockford leading 15-10. Johnny Hernandez has it up against his chest. And a couple of seconds from now, he'll get going. Under 10 now. They look for a play. Hobson, corner bins. Banks for three. Didn't take it. Shot blocked by Gandy. Chris Gandy turns in the big defensive play to end the first quarter. And Boylan's lead remains at five. It's 15-10 after one. Rockford Boylan leading Bradley Bourbon A. One of your network sponsors, the Toyota Dealers of Illinois. Champagne once again. These are the finalists in the cl uh, Class A and Class AA slam dunk competition. The first year for this, and it's been a rousing success. Big crowds in the assembly hall last night for the prelims. This is Buck Grimm of Morton, and that's not bad for a high school player, is it? Little hang time. Also, Shelby Roberson of Springfield in the final four in AA, and we'll tell you who won that as the weekend progresses. Now, see, Shelby stole my dunk. <laughs> sure, he did, Kenny. <laughs> Get that mini tramp out. <laughs> Second quarter underway, 15-10. Boylan leading Bradley Bourbonnet and Rockford Boylan with the basketball. Bradley still in that matchup zone. It's caused Boylan a little bit of trouble so far, although Banks has made a couple of shots over it. See, they're not attacking. You have to attack that zone, Dan. Get some good ball movement. Get a seam if you can get it. It's tough against the matchup, but attack it at least. Slaughter off the back iron. No good. Battle for the board, and as they fight for it, a foul called on number 20, Matt Berlin. Well, Matt Berlin Bradley going for the loose basketball. And that's his first personal Picks foul. up his first personal Team foul. Five against Bradley. First substitution in the game is number 21 for Rockford Boylan. He's Dana Kiley, six foot one inch junior. Boylan will play 10 players. Slaughter, Banks, two man game. Got inside but couldn't make it and Gandy slapped the ball out. Now Bradley has it down by five. Oh, lob it to Gandy. Kylie went for the steal, didn't get it. And Cole's jumps out on the baseline. He's right there, Mark Cole. Well, if Mark Cole can shoot from the outside, that will open up that inside game because they're double teaming Gandy down low. Bradley down by only three. You have to say right now, Kenny, that the tempo of the game favors Bradley. They've gotten it into a half-court game. No question about it. Hernandez three, way too long. Sulu Thomas the rebound. So Bradley with the basketball down by three. Chance to cut into that lead. Good skip pass Berlin. Love Gandy and he missed the dunk. He never really had complete control, Dan. 
but it was a great play. You see what they were trying to do, go down low to Gandy, down low. He just never had complete control. Here it is again, now watch Gandy. See Dan, I don't think he really had control of the basketball because Slaughter put a body on him and he came down on top of Slaughter's head. I was gonna say he took a pretty good body shot from Slaughter. <laughs> that might have been called a foul. Hopson back into the game, replacing McNett. Spinning shot inside, rejected by Gandy. That's his third block. Stripped inside now. Good play by Cole and taken away by Bradley. Look out. Holding the ankle. Chris Gandy on the floor. Hold up. You need help? Well, I believe he banged up his right knee a little bit. But he's up. A little bit shaken, and we'll take another look at the play. Let's see if we can pick it up. Here he is. He goes up and out. Steps on the foot of Tim Hobson. That hurts. And a push-off foul on Banks. Boy, you don't Little want Darrell that. Banks. Yeah, you sure don't. Banks picks up his first. Two as a team on Boylan. Gandy's going to take a chair right now. Number 52, Ken Duchesne replaces him as the Brian's junior. I think Gandy's okay. We might also mention that Ray Gay of Proviso East, who blew his ankle out late in that game against Collinsville, uh, is not injured as badly as we might have thought. He may be able to play tomorrow in the semifinal. I think they may need him. Back here, Duchesne picks up the foul. Going for the offensive rebound. That's six on the team now, and the next one will put Boylan in the bonus. Fouls on number 52, Ken Duchesne, and that's his first. 16 fouls against Bradley, no shot. Now Boylan is in the bonus. You have that matchup zone again for Bradley. Tyler to Slaughter. Slaughter up against double team pressure and knocked it in off the glass. Well, with Gandy out of the ball game, now you know they'll go down to Slaughter every chance they get. Berlin on the break. And Matt Berlin brings his team back within three. And now Banks has it knocked away and out of bounds to Boylan. Oh, that's just great hustle, though, Dan. Great hustle by Mark Cole. Running down the floor, knocking the ball out of bounds. And also gives Bradley a chance to get Gandy back. Boy, but look at the hustle here. Just on the opposite end, on the offensive end, Berlin with the layup. But then all of a sudden, here they come back down court. You know they want to run and gun, but that's just good hustle by Mark Cole to knock the ball out of bounds. Three-point shot no good by Banks. Rebound up and swatted away, but Johnny Hernandez was fouled on the play. Johnny Hernandez is everywhere for Rockford. He's just been all over the floor for the Titans. Foul goes against Darren Pickering. That's his second. Here's the shot, boy, but just look at Hernandez. Good offensive rebound. No pump, no fake. Gets up. Actually, Gandy gets a clean block, but the foul was before Gandy came over the whistle for the They get a good look at Johnny Hernandez. Steve Gore says he's the strongest guy on their team. And he shows. Look at the muscles. Headed for Eastern Illinois to play basketball, but he was the quarterback and captain of the 12 and 1 football team, a three year baseball starter. Makes one out of two. Doesn't sell tickets, he does <laughs> everything else. His father's an Illinois State Patrolman. <laughs> Whistle away from play now. Slaughter. Slaughter called for the foul, trying to hang on to Gandy. That's only. The third team foul on Boylan and the first on Slaughter, so it'll come in bounds. Well, I think Boylan, they've done an outstanding Boylan job staying out of foul trouble. That's his first third team foul on Boylan. back in to replace Hernandez. Inbounds it come to Berlin, who buries the three. Vern Sloan told us that Berlin has carte blanche from out there. He's the only guy that he gives it to, but he's got it. He can shoot it any time he wants. And he showed why right there. Inside Slaughter. Back inside from Banks, and he brings it back out on the dribble. Cross-court pass now down low. Hobson up. Slaughter blocked by Gandy, and now out of bounds to Bradley. That's four blocks by Gandy. Strong play inside defensively by Bradley Bourbonnet, and we get a timeout. A one-point ball game with 433 to play in the first half, and one of your network sponsors, the Dairy Farm Families of Illinois and Wisconsin.
Country Company's three-point showdown also happening this weekend here in Champaign. The Class A finalists, Mike Abens of Samanox, Scott Aiken of Morris, and the other two. And then some of the action from the prelims yesterday. Brian Rhodes right here, draining a few. He'll be in the Final Four in Class A. Back to live action. This is Bradley with a basketball. Down by one. Cole all the way for two, and Mark Cole has really picked up this team. He has really picked up this team. He's the heart and soul of the team, Dan, and nobody stopped him. They didn't stop the basketball. 33 is Greg Pincos into the ball game for Boylan. Bradley's got it back with a one-point lead now. They trailed by five at the end of the first quarter, but the Boilermakers are beginning to assert themselves here in the second. Cole again with a good fake. Throws it up there and hit the back of the iron. Gandy fortunate not to get his third foul over <laughs> he the pulled back pulled back just a little bit. Berlin had it knocked away. Pinkos with a steal. Kick that back out. Thompson baseline. Left-handed shot went in. Oh. Didn't, wasn't touched. Oh, what a tough shot by Tim Hobson. A very tough shot. I thought he should have kicked that back out. Terrell Banks was up there, but I don't think he laid a glove on that one. 2019, Boylan back on top. Shot up and off the glass. No good by Pickery. Rebound, though, to the smaller Bradley club. And the three-point shot by Pickering's no good. Got his own. Nice move. And laid it in. Darren Pickering. A big part of that offensive sequence. Missed one, got his own rebound, took it down the lane, and laid it in. That's just heart and determination, Dan, when you can just get on the offensive boards like that. Ping post. Got it down low now. May have traveled, got away with it. Shot blocked by Gandy. That's number five, and score that one. Well, Gandy blocked the shot, but it went back into the hands of the Titans. Here it is again. Now, you'll see the block shot by Gandy, block number five. Boy, but just look at this. Just flying in with Darrell Banks. Puts the shot up and in and fouled in the process. So Darrell Banks at the free throw line to try and complete this three-point play. He's got seven already, and that's three fouls on Darren Pickers. Very, very impressed so far, Dan, with Darrell Banks. He's doing a good. Brian McNett is number 50. He's back into the game for Rockford Boiler. And on the other side, 50 is James Terrell, 5'11 inch sophomore, just in for Bradley Bourbonnet. Here he is with a basketball. Cole down at baseline. In deep. Laid it up and it rolled out. Boy, I thought he had that one. I thought he sure. had it too. He took the baseline and said, if you guys will give it to me, I'll just take it. I think the turnover was 10 for Bradley, just three for uh, Boylan. Here's your point, Boylan 10 off the turnover. And there's another one, right? Oh, no, out of bounds to Boylan. I thought for a second Bradley was going to come away with it that time. Vern Sloan's team doing a great job defensively tonight. Outstanding job defensively. Easy, Matchup zone, giving the Titans fits, I think. Hernandez three-pointer right there. Johnny Hernandez, second three of the night. That's what you call a zone breaker. Boiling by four, with a minute and a half to play in the opening half. Banks got a hand on it. Cole ran it down. Cole hook pass cross-court to Berlin. Berlin lean in on the baseline, no good, and Slaughter rips it down for Rockford Glory. And Gandy hasn't touched the basketball in what seems like weeks. No baskets in the second half, only two in the first. Banks off the fake. Down low, Slaughter, and a traveling call. Yes, sir. He got the ball down low. Took the one little extra stutter step, and the official standing right there blew the whistle. One minute left, and Bradley trying to cut into a four-point boiling lead. Mark Cole with a head and shoulders 
Nope, nothing there. Oh, nice, nice cut. Bound. He dropped it down from Berlin, who couldn't make the shot. Berlin runs it down in the corner, though. There's Scrappy Dan. Cole again. Cole zips it out to Berlin. <laughs> Berlin shot short, and finally, Boylan's got the rebound. Johnny Hernandez pulls it back out. Banks, nice dish down low to Slaughter. Got it up over Gandy, but it wouldn't go. That ball almost died on the front of the rim. I thought Gandy had a piece of it. Ten seconds. Bradley with a final shot. Trying to cut into a four-point lead. Berlin crossover. Nice move. But he missed it, and Slaughter's got it. Can they get a shot off? No. Nope. Darrell Banks couldn't quite get there in time, and we've come to the end of the first half. Not an offensive showcase by any means, but an exciting game nonetheless. Boylan by four at halftime, 25 to 21. Well, Dan, I think you really have to get Gandy the basketball more if you're Bradley. He hasn't touched the basketball in what, like we said, seems to be weak. But you have to give Boylan credit. They've been scrappy. Defensively, there's not much wrong that Bradley has done tonight. And right now, Joe Pasch is standing by with Bradley coach Vern Sloan. All right, Dan, thanks very much, Vern. What are you taking in the locker room with you? Well, we've, we've got the tempo of the game where we want it. It's not an up and down game. It seems like we're uh, going too fast in offense, making mistakes, and they're converting those mistakes into their layups. They've done a good job of shooting threes, though. We've got to do a better job to get out on the shooter. Okay, go get him, Coach. Thank you. Thanks very much, Vern Sloan, the head coach for Bradley Bourbon A. We'll send it back over to center court to Kenny and Dan. Okay, Joe, Vern Sloan very happy with his team's performance in the first half, even though they trail Rockford Boylan by four. It's 25-21 at halftime. One of your network sponsors, True Value Hardware. Welcome back to the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois, where... In the third game of the Class A, or Class AA Boys High School Basketball Tournament, Boylan leading Bradley Bourbon A by four points, 25-21. Interesting game, Kenny McReynolds, so far, even though, as we said, it's not an especially uh, thrilling game from the offensive standpoint. Uh, many of Boylan's games have been this year, but this one is not. Well, I think Boylan has just really, really been outscrapping uh, Bradley. I really do. I just think, you know, Bradley... They have a great player in Chris Gandy. They haven't gotten him the basketball. But, hey, I think if I'm Bradley's coach, Vern Sloan, I would be happy going down just four points at the half. They haven't played a great basketball game. It's not an up-and-down tempo ball game like Boylan loves to get up and down the floor. So I think Coach Sloan should be happy. Yeah, from the Bradley standpoint, it's much like, uh, like their super sectional game where they uh, were involved in a one-point game with Hillcrest at halftime, and Gandy had only four points. He came alive in the second half, and Fern Sloan says one of his major attributes is the fact that he's very patient and won't force up anything. Well, he hasn't forced up anything in the first half. In the second quarter, he didn't touch the basketball. But for Borland, hey, i am really been impressed with Darrell Banks. I mean, let's face it, Banks has really, what I think, has been playing an outstanding basketball game. We talked about Slaughter. We talked about Hobson coming into this uh, uh, game hot and of course Hernandez this young man is quite an athlete a lot of good players on the floor in this third quarter final game the score again 25 21 at halftime Rockford Boylan on top and we'll return after these local messages Welcome back to Assembly Hall. We're at halftime with Boylan leading over Bradley Bourbon A by four here at the break of our Class AA quarterfinal game number three. Joe Passion back with you and joined alongside Joliet West basketball coach Mike O'Connell, who is one of the many coaches who has the positives and negatives about the country company's insurance three-point showdown, all the preliminaries that led into the finals, the semifinals last night, as well as the slam dunk contest. In fact, Mike was judging the three-point contest. He had one of his players, Corey Shell be in the finalists that you'll see here on Saturday evening. What's your overall feelings, Mike, about that? Is it takeaway from the players' preparation, or maybe is it a good, healthy diversion? Well, I'll tell you, uh, before uh, the regional started, I was a little leery of it, but uh, it was a real nice diversion for our players. Yeah. Uh, Corey Shelby didn't seem to affect his play. He played well. Uh, real nice before the games come out, about 45 minutes. Kids were dressed. We'd watch it and then go in. Worked out real well. Some of the, you know, so, so I've been real happy, obviously, with him qualifying for the Final Four in the state. That's another plus. Now, you also brought up, I think, some interesting thoughts about 
Thursday night. We had a pretty big crowd here for the Country Company's three-point showdown, as well as for the slam dunk semifinals. And I think it brings in more for the community, as well as a, a lot of fun right here at Assembly Hall on Thursday night. Normally, you don't have that. Well, yeah, they had a wave going last night. And, uh, uh, you know, how many kids get to get uniform and get on assembly floor? It's the first time I've been out there, and one of my assistants made a layup. So he said he's, he's one for one from the floor. But uh, it was a real nice atmosphere, and I think the eight teams that were down here, a lot of them are looking for things to do on Thursday night. Instead of sitting around the rooms, and I saw several of the teams here, so that's another plus for it also. It was also interesting to find both Class A and Class AA kids down here mingling together, shooting together. I thought that was something unique you haven't seen well in 21 years. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think of that. Just the, the clashing, the various uniforms, and uh, some of the kids got the Southern Draws, and uh, obviously the Chicago and our area kids. And it, was, it was a great bunch. Very briefly, you've been one and one this year against Bradley Bourbonnet. Can they pull this out against Boylan? I tell you, if Gandy can stay out of foul trouble, they, they might be able to stay close. I didn't realize Bowen was just quite as quick as they are. Mike, great to have you here. Thanks very much. Thanks. Michael Connell of Joliet West, and we will be back to take a look at more of the first half stats and highlights when we return to Assembly Hall. Quarterfinal game number three. We're at the break. Boylan leads over Bourbon A. Always something on. Everyone wants to watch. Oh, hi. Want to see a story about the plastonauts? At least that's the goal. Okay. Here's one about a robot. You know, a machine that's this looks good. different kinds of jobs. Transportation for our crew is provided by Budget Rent-A-Car. Budget Rent-A-Car is right in your neighborhood with over 45 Chicago land and central Illinois locations. The smart money is on budget. And so far, the smart money is on Rockford Boylan here in game three. Titans leading Bradley by four points, 25-21, and a very uh, low-scoring, low-paced uh, first half of action. And Kenny McReynolds, let's take a look at the first half highlights and see just how some of these points were scored. Well, one thing you know about Bradley is Chris Gandy. This young man is superb. He's an all-state. If you get him the ball down low, this is what he'll do. He'll get him the lob. They have to do more of that, though, Dan. He only took three shots. Of course, he made both of them. Mike Slaughter, they say he's the most underrated player in the uh, city, in the, in the state. Beautiful fast break. We use our slam cam for two points. This young man is playing an outstanding game. I like Darrell Banks. This young man has shown that he can play the game of basketball. A three-pointer, nothing but net. And you know that the Titans, they love to get up and down the floor. Hey, Darren Pickering, here's a guy, loose ball, following it up. I tell you, Dan, the Titans have to keep Bradley off the board because Bradley, they're very scrappy. This is a scrappy, scrappy basketball team. And what can you say about Johnny Hernandez? This young man is maybe the best athlete on the floor. He can hit it from three-point range. That's a football player shooting like that, Dan. He's this drained game. a couple in the first half, man. Boylan with a four-point lead. Joe Passion standing by now with Boylan head coach Steve Gores. Joe. All right, thanks very much, Dan. Steve, give us a little summary of that halftime talk that you had to your kids. Well, I tell them we got to pick up the pace a little bit. That's 25-21 uh, to 21 is way too low scoring for us. Uh, and I think we have to attack inside uh, a little bit more because ganey has got two fouls and uh, the other big kid has, Pickering has three. And we certainly want to take advantage of that. If they're going to play this a little soft inside because they have a little foul difficulty, we want to certainly want to penalize them for that. And I said uh, we, had, we gave a couple offensive rebounds we shouldn't have done. And I think we got to uh, really concentrate and, and control on the boards. Great, Steve. Thank you very much. Have a great All second right, half. Thanks, Joe. All right. We'll send it back over to Kenny and Dan at half court. All right, Joe. Thanks very much. Uh, shooting percentages away down there for Rockford Boylan Kenny as a team this year they've been a 52 percent uh, shooting club and they're well down into the 30s as we take a look at the first half stats brought to you by milk it does a body good and by the people who produce milk the dairy farm families of Illinois and Wisconsin hey as you see the field goal percentage look at Bradley 45 percent to 37 boy but look at this Bradley only has taken 22 shots of course rebounding edge goes to Bradley Bourbon 17 14 turnovers 10 for Bradley just four for Borland. It seems, though, that Bradley's been able to take more advantage of the turnovers they forced uh, than Rockford Boylan has. At any rate, it's a four-point game at halftime. Just about ready for third-quarter action. We'll be back after these local messages. Back live in Champaign, Chris Gandy has scored the opening basket of the third period, and Boylan's lead has been cut to two at 25-23. We said they had to get the ball more to him, and then they rammed it down low the first time out. Right off the bat, that's what they want to do. 
Boy, no foul call, huh? Well, Bill Benz lost it out of bounds, and Bradley's going to have it. Steve Moore is asking for the foul. <laughs> Where was it? It looked like Pickering tripped him. He's pressured by Rockford Boylan that time, and now they back off. Matt Berlin, number 20, has six points in the first half. Julian Thomas, Dandy way outside, 18-footer, short. Yeah, I don't think he made him shooting from 18 feet. Well, but Benz and Slaughter knocked the ball out of bounds, and Bradley's going to hang on to it. I think you want to get Gandy down low, Dan. I don't think you want him shooting from 18 feet out. Maybe when he gets to the Big Ten, yes. But not right. today. A little too high on the pass. Gandy had to go off his fingertips, and here's Darrell Banks. Banks, Hobson, Ben didn't shoot it, can, good three-point shooter, Hobson, oh, nice. nice move inside, but he missed the layup, and Gandy wraps it up for Bradley Bourbonnet. See, I think you have to dunk those, Dan, nice step through, instead of laying it up nice and easy, dunk it, be aggressive, attack it. Cole kicked it back outside, they flashed Pickering to the free throw line, he shot no good, but a foul called on Gandy, and Chris Gandy picked up his third, and that's trouble. Well, I think you have to sit him down, don't you? Let's see if we can see it again. Watch Gandy right there, the elbow the slaughter Chris Gandy, that's before the shot. Make a substitution, but it's not for Chris Gandy. Cole will take a seat, and number 50, James Terrell, checks in for Bradley Bourbonnet. So Gandy will play on with those three fouls. Boy, look for Slaughter to get the basketball an awful lot right now. <laughs> there it is. Could he buy the shot, though? Rebound up and good by Hobson. Tim Hobson is four in the game now, and the lead is four. Okay, here's your double team. They're trying to make this an up-tempo basketball game by pressing. Bradley just backs off, though. Curling gets away from Hernandez. Now Thomas drained it for three. Sunu Thomas, I believe, with his first shot of the game. Not to mention his first basket. But he's given Bradley new life. They're down by one and a block shot by Gandy. Here come the Boilermakers with a chance at the lead. And that's block shot number six for Chris Gandy. Terrell up high, had it knocked away and stolen. Now a reseal by Berlin. These guys don't give up. They really don't give up. They're really a scrappy, aggressive basketball team. Pickering. And it's tied up. And the ultimate possession will go oh, Rockford oh, Boylan's way. Hobson just reached in and just grabbed the basketball to tie it up to cause a jump ball. Alternating possession and rule. Here it is again. Now watch Hobson just come into the screen, reaches in and just snatches the basketball. So that'll take that. Thank you very much. There's a little something about the strength of Tim Hobson. Boy. A real strong young man, 6'4", 205. Defensive end in football. A double-figure scorer in points. And a double-figure rebounding man since Lee Lampley had left the ball club three games ago. Slaughter up high, in the corner. Shot on the way and off the back iron. Boylan's going to hang on to it. 22 is Brian Tudy, 6'3", and junior into the game. And they're going to get a timeout. Timeout with 4.58 to go in quarter number three. It's 27-26, Boylan by one. One of your network sponsors is Radisson Sweet. Nobody else sees the world through your eyes. Yours is a style that you just can't disguise. Your whole approach is an original one. So I get a room when you can get a right of sun. It happens every morning in London, Paris, and Madrid. In Munich, Manchester, Zurich, and Brussels. In Glasgow, Stockholm, Frankfurt, Milan, and soon Berlin. As the new day arrives, so do we. American Airlines, with the most non-stops to Europe from across the U.S. American Airlines, something special to Europe. Winds whipping up to 35 miles per hour with snow drifting.
lifting in some parts up to four feet. Meanwhile, over at the stadium earlier, the Bulls were victorious, 122 to 109. Michael Jordan leading all scores with 37. portion of the country company's three-point showdown sees Corey Shelby, Ryan Gear, Quincy Trice, and Paul Van Devin as the final four. Back live we go. Rockford Boylan has the basketball just under five minutes left and Boylan clinging to a one-point lead over Bradley Bourbonnet. goes to Hobson. Soft shot from the baseline is good, and Hobson has a couple of hoops. The only two hoops for Boylan here in the third quarter. And of course, with Gandy with three personals, you know they're going to go down low. Bradley changes defenses off the timeout. They go zone press. Didn't really bother Bradley too much. Get pass tipped away. Cole's got it. Almost stolen, and now it is stolen by Hernandez. Hernandez on the break is stripped from behind. I think everybody's okay. His body's hit the deck. The foul goes against number 20, Matt Berlin. Yeah, Matt Berlin, inadvertent trip. Now, here's Hernandez coming down court. See Berlin gets tangled up right there? Foot just a little bit tangled up with Hernandez. Everybody's okay, right? There. Just steps on the back of his foot. Sliding into first base, man. <laughs> Training. Get back for, for a pickoff move. Yeah, he's okay, though. Slaughter in the paint. Blocked by Gandy. Blocked again by Gandy. But that was after a whistle and a foul had been called against Bradley. And it'll be on number 42, Brian Pickering. That's number four, Ken. Well, Gandy has seven blocks today. This is just a beautiful. There's block one. And Pickering with the foul before Gandy comes over. Now that's four for Gary Pickering. Slaughter missed the first. Pickering, the six foot four inch junior. He is apparently about ready to check out of the game. He will. James Terrell back on for him. Slaughter is going to get one more. Slaughter has six points in the game. 50% free throw shooter for the year. Kind of a sideways stance at the free throw line. Unorthodox. That one didn't look very good at all. <laughs> He's going to flung it up there, so the lead stays at 3, 29-26. High post, ball batted away. Hernandez couldn't get it. Nice save, and who else but Cole did it? Who else but Cole now looking at Hernandez on the floor? Petey. Hernandez, three-point shot, no good. And a rebound to Bradley. Terrell, good position and good leaping ability inside by the guy just in off the bench. Sophomore, 5'11". Here's Terrell, number 50. Two-man game to Gandy, and Chris Gandy gets his first uh, hoop, second hoop of the third quarter. Eight in the game for him. Banks forces up a quick shot, no good. Got his own rebound. It's no good. And Bradley's got the ball back. I tell you what, the tempo of this basketball game, I think, is in Bradley's favor. They're down by one point, but A, they're close, and B, it's been a half-court basketball game. There's your lob right there. Hobson got in front of that one and batted it away, and Teedy with a no-look pass to Banks, who can't score, but who will go to the free-throw line. But we've seen all day today a lot of balls just rolling off the rim. Here it is again. Now, here's Banks. Little head fake gets up, gets bumped before the shot, but the ball just won't fall. Thomas, Thomas picks up the foul, number one on him, four on the team. Boylan has not committed a personal foul here in the second half. And Banks missed the free throw. So that was way long. Boylan has missed three in a row. Thirty twenty-eight. 28 well, had Gandy been looking, they had him on a breakaway. Had his head down and was jogging down the floor. Zulu Thomas in the lane. Push shot is good. Great ball penetration by Thomas. Nobody stopped him. Got to the free throw line. Four in the tank comes away with two. The game is tied at 30. Petey to Banks almost stepped out of bounds. 
Hopkins open for the take if they want to give it to him, and there it is. Gandy could not block that one. A strong move by Hobson, who has three hooks in the third quarter. And once again, Gandy has three personal fouls, so he's going to play a little timid. So every chance down, I would go down and try to take it to Gandy. Terrell double teamed on the high post. Julie Thomas, Berlin, no shot there. Oh, look at Hernandez. Bradley really needs to balance the floor here and start over. Cole put his head down and laid it in. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> something else, isn't he? Just put his head down and said, okay, I'll take it. Mark Cole has eight. Tied again at 32. <laughs> Hernandez three-point shot on the way. In and out. Slaughter and a foul called beforehand. And we'll see who picks it up. That's a good position by Slaughter, though. Fouls on number 32, Mark Cole. That's his second, but five now on the team. And again, Boylan, you have to commit a foul in the second half. Here's Cole. Well, again. Cole, he just puts his head down, Dan, and decides, hey, I'm going to the hoop. Gets around Darrell Banks. Boylan's going to throw it in from underneath, and it comes way out front. Johnny Hernandez. Low posted goes. Hobson again, and Hobson scores again. You better believe it. Tim Hobson, every time down, just take it to Gandy because if he's not going to play, you might as well take it to him. Now a foul in the backcourt against Hobson, and he has very good recognition by the Rockford Boylan team. Here it is again now. Here's Hobson. See Gandy playing just straight up. So if you're going to play defense straight up, a man can just go right around you. Now here Hobson again going for the steal. They want to make this an up-tempo basketball game. Going for the steal and right there with the right arm. The whistle blows that he hits James Terrell. Foul number one on Hobson. Number one on the team in the second half. Bradley basketball trailing by a bucket. 105 to play. Third quarter here in Champaign. Candy to the high post. Had it blocked by Slaughter, and Slaughter hauls it out of the air. Michael Slaughter with a defensive stop. And now Banks loads it up. Slaughter back to get the offensive rebound, and Sunu Thomas steps in front of the pass. Good block. Blocked by Hernandez. Berlin hit the bottom of the backboard on oh. the rebound. It's Attempt and back it goes to Boylan. What a play by Hernandez. Look at Burst Lowe. <laughs> what a play by Hernandez. Look at Thomas in the passing lane. Now watch Hernandez. This young man just comes out of nowhere, and this is a clean block. Just a beautiful block. And then right there, losing control of the basketball is Berlin. Got a little bit ahead of himself now. Boylan can hold for the final shot. We're inside 25 seconds. Rockford Boylan leading by two. This game's been played at a slow pace, Kenny, but it hasn't lacked for excitement. Well, I think Hernandez is happy they're going to hold for one shot. He looks tired. Banks to Ben. Now Banks again. Low. Banks into the paint. Shot is good. Darrell Banks. And that'll do it for quarter number three. Eight minutes left in game number three, and it's 36-32, Boylan leading Bradley Bourbonnet, one of your network sponsors, Country Companies Insurance. They come from towns as small as Pinckneyville and as big as Chicago, all filled with hope, some destined for glory. We got to get the ball back to Detroit. and all the fans. The country is behind you. Every year, British Airways brings 24 million people together. British Airways favorite era.
Our game summary brought to you by the Toyota dealers of Illinois. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Chris Gandy up top on uh, Bradley Bourbonnais list, Kenny, with eight points and seven blocks. That's only two off the double-A records that's currently held by LaFonso Wellen. And, of course, Banks, ten points, six assists. Fourth quarter underway. Bradley has it. Terrell almost bounced it on the line over there on the far sideline. Berlin had it stripped away. Hernandez dives to the floor. Got to get it out of that corner, and they do. This is Cole, and it went in and out. And Slaughter, another rebound for Rockford Boylan. Hernandez penetration, nice dish, and blocked again by Gandy. That's number eight. Let's see, now Gandy has decided, hey, I know I had three personals, but I'm going to play defense in the fourth quarter. That's eight blocks. Oh, there's a lot. Oh, they couldn't get it to him. They had him, but you see Hernandez it. sneaking back for weak side help. He was going to try and draw the charge. They double him in the paint, but he got the shot away, and now out of bounds. Ooh. Close call there. Bradley uh, got the worst of it. Rockford Boylan will have it. Boy, look at Slaughter. You see, Dan, when a young man bending over like Slaughter, pulling at his shorts, he's gasping for air. Here's the block again. Boy, look at Gandy. He says, hey, I know I have three fouls, but I'm going to have to block this shot. Was well, he a quick jumper or he what? He got up. Jumper. He was faked out on the pass and then jumped right back up. Hernandez, a nice offensive board. He forces it back up there and missed everything. Slaughter's turn. No good. And finally hauled out of there by Darren Pickering. Boy, this Bradley team, they bend, but they just don't break. And they, if they can stay close, Dan, in a close ball game, anything can happen. You might say the same about Boylan's Kenny. They led by five at the quarter, by four at halftime, and again by four after three. Gandy way outside, spun it out of there. And Banks has the rebound for Boylan. Shot's not going down either way right now. I, I don't know if you want Gandy taking that shot from that far out. Darrell Banks still bends Johnny Hernandez. Boy, he's something else, isn't he? A nice looking player. He really is. He'll be playing for Rick Samuels down at Eastern Illinois next year. 11 points in the game for Hernandez. Three three point passes. And the lead all of a sudden out to seven. And a timeout call by Vern Sloan and Bradley Bourbonnet. 5.49 to play in the game. It's 39 32. Rockford Boylan on top. One of your network sponsors, the Dairy Farm Families of Illinois and Wisconsin. Our money. Back in 1950, Bradley Bourbonnet was the smallest school in the Sweet 16. Only 275 students when they made their most recent trip to uh, Champaign. It was 1950. Lost to Danville in the quarterfinals, and right now, Bradley Bourbonnet trailing Boylan 39-32, and Rockford gets the ball on the turnover. Slaughter on the baseline, left it short, but a pushing foul called on Rockford Boylan as they battle for the rebound. Well, everything been, has been going Boylan's way. They're on a 7 nothing run right now. That foul's going to go against Tim Hobson. Well, the foul 52, Tim Hobson, that's his second Ball oh, knocked out of bounds off the foot. I thought Berman, <laughs> Johnny Hernandez thought so too. Oh man, it looked, it looked like he went off the foot of Matt Berlin. Referee right on top of the play though. Here comes Mark Cole across the timeline. Now Sulu Thomas. Bradley needs a basket here. 5.27 to go. We're down by seven. Tipped away by Hernandez, but re regained on the far side by Thomas. His penetration. Shot block. Foul call. Bill Ben. Well, Ben reaching over just a little bit. As you see Thomas coming by Ben. Ben leaning ball, over ball, and ball, gets him just with the arm. That's a third team foul on Rockford Boylan. This is a shooting foul. 34, Sidney Thomas with two shots. Sidney Thomas, a 65% free throw shooter. And he bangs the first one through. Six points in the game for him. Boyle Sloan looking pretty cool over there on the Boilermakers bench. There was a lot of basketball to be played. Thomas got them both, 39-35, or 34, I should say, a five-point lead. Oh, 
Hernandez double team. Ben, long shot from the corner, and Gandy all over that rebound. I don't know if that was a real good shot that Bill Bins just took. But it's not Boylan's style to slow down the offense. Gandy was open inside. The pass way too far out in front of him, and the turnover gives it right back to Boylan. Well, I tell you what now, Boylan has to take advantage of all the turnovers. 17 turnovers now. Hobson gets the slaughter. Count the basket. That was just an outstanding pass. Slaughter in a great spot. Comes away with the two. Now here it is again. Watch Hobson. Gets Gandy up in the air. Hands it off to Hobson. Hobson hit on the arm, but he goes up aggressive and strong as he's hit on the arm. But he'll come away with the two points. Here's the pass right again to Slaughter. Slaughter goes up strong as he slaps on the wrist. But he comes away with the bucket. Missed the free throw. He's 0 for 3 up there so far. And it's 41-34. Four and a half left. Berlin trouble, gets it away to Cole, and now Gandy with a dunk. That's what they've been trying to do the entire ball game. Chris and Gandy in double figures now, Kenny, with 10. Also a great job of stealing off his man with his arm, and then falling back to the basket. And taken away by Thomas. Sulu Thomas weaving through traffic, and now out in front. We know Finns was very lackadaisical with the basketball. A big turnover with 4.01 left. Bradley will have it when we come back, trailing by five. And one of your network sponsors is Company Countries Insurance. I'm with Don Slaughter up here, of course. He's the father of the, the young man out there who's having a great game for Rockford Boylan. You were on the 55-56 Rockford West State Champions. What's it feel like seeing your son experience this? It's extremely exciting. I'm really happy to be here, and I'm hoping that Boylan will win this thing. What do they got to do to finish this up? They've got to beat this team first. <laughs> <laughs> You're smoking like a true player. Very difficult game. Great. Thanks very much, Don. We'll go back downstairs and finish up this game ourselves. How about that, Kenny? Hey, I like that. I like that. That was an easy <laughs> question. <laughs> Boylan basketball on the turnover by Bradley. Boylan hanging on to that five-point lead, and we're down to three and a half to go. Inside off the fingertips and out of bounds. Gandy knocked it uh, out of bounds, and it will still be Rockford Boylan's basketball. Gandy with eight blocks, one off the double-A record. Boylan finally, Kenny, has decided to pull it out. They spread the floor, and against that matchup zone, they're able to handle the basketball and run some time off this clock. Yeah, they don't really need a lot of points right now. They just have to be smart and handle the basketball. Bradley putting on more pressure now. Hobson sealed off in the baseline, right back outside. Tough pass inside, too tough to handle for Hobson. One pass, too many, Dan. Yep. One pass, two minutes. I'm not sure if Steve Gores even wanted a shot in that season. Here's Cole. Baseline goes to Green. Sulu Thomas off the glass and in. Nice shot by Thomas. Nice curl to the bucket. Goes up with the left hand. And Bradley takes advantage of what was a bad shot by Rockford. Nine points for Thomas. They streak inside. Thomas almost had the steal, but instead, Hobson another layup. Ten points in the second half. Twelve for the game for him. Yeah, Hobson camped right in the paint. Good position and just comes away with the easy layup. Pickering to Gandy. Knocked away. Thomas regains it and missed the three. And Slaughter, a big defensive rebound for Rockford Boylan at the two-minute mark. Slaughter scores! Nice shot by Michael Slaughter. Everything going Rockford Boylan's way right now. Slaughter in double figures with 10, and the lead is 7 with 1.54 to go. They need a 3. Sunu Thomas didn't go. How did it not go? And Rockford Boylan with the rebound and a foul call on the reach-in as Mark Cole picks it up. And you can just feel the momentum now all Boylan's way. The Titans having everything go their way. 
The shots won't go all of a sudden for Bradley, but they're going for Michael Slaughter. Nice pull-up jump shot, uses the glass so well. This young man is showing today that he can play. He has 13 rebounds to go along with his 10 points. He pretty much played Chris Gandy to a standstill so far. Timeout called. We'll keep it here with a minute 43 to go. Well, before the basketball game, we had a chance to talk about could Slaughter neutralize Gandy. I would say to this point, he's done a pretty good job. Vern Sloan said that if that happens, his team will be in trouble, and his team is in trouble here. Down by seven. You better believe it. Once again, the three-point showdown brought to you by Country Companies, the Class A finalists, Mike Aben, Scott Aiken, Brian Rhodes, Garrett Allison, and at halftimes of the morning session tomorrow, we'll see the finalists. And uh, Corey Shelby of Joliet West, Ryan Gear, Quincy Trice of Zion Benton, and Paul Van Devin of Cary Grove. Now let's go hear what Steve Gorge is saying in his house. Illinois coach Lou Henson among uh, this big crowd. And tonight, Kenny, this place is very close to being sold out. Yeah, you don't see many empty seats, and I'm sure Lou Henson is very happy to see Gandy 10 points, 8 block shots. And of course, his other recruit, Richard King, today just put on an amazing display. Free throw good. Terrell Banks. I like Banks. A little showmanship after he makes the free throw, falls back, puts his hands up, salutes the big crowd. <laughs> I think I'm a hot dog at heart, Dan. <laughs> well, he missed the second with no opportunity to raise the hands on that. 46-38. See the time. Gandy off the dribble. Nice soft shot on the face of Chris Gandy. But now Bradley has to come up with a good defensive stance. They need a steal. Red floor again, offense and Lisa Rockford Boylan. They've got people in the corner. Yeah, they they keep away. Turn around. Oh, nice. He had to screw it right to Sulu Thomas. Bounce pass. Bradley laid it in. We're not finished yet. We're not finished yet. That's a big steal. And now they foul in the backcourt, sending Darrell Banks to the free throw line. Now, that's a pretty big steal by Thomas. I tell you what, that's the second time within the last couple of minutes he's come away with a big steal. Watch him in the passing lane. That's great anticipation. Well, he saw it coming all the way, and he was on the move before that ball was even Great released. anticipation. Nice bounce pass. Beautiful layup. And Brantley back in the ball game, only down now by four. Real back will get the one and one. He's a 72% free throw shooter. And he made the first one. Cold-blooded free throw by Darrell Banks with a minute one to play. Here's your free throw. Boy, five out of 13. Golden Hill only took line twice. Slaughter with the rebound, and what a big rebound it was. Inside a minute now, and Banks will go right back up to the line. That's 14 rebounds for Slaughter. And, and number 14 may have been the big Steve Gores told us he was one of the most underrated players in the state. And you've done a pretty good job tonight, especially on that glass. And now, oh, look at the bench. That's bad. Banks missed it, and Gandy got the rebound. It's a two-possession game now, 47-42, 51 seconds left. Berlin staggering on the dribble, and a foul called on Hernandez. Oh, oh. Wow. That's the one thing you don't want to do is foul and stop the clock. But fortunately for the Titans, they had a foul to give. Actually, they have two more to give before putting uh, Bradley on the line. Bounce pass inside. Cole got the layup inside Hobson. And that's a tough shot because Hobson had pretty good position. Banks is open. They don't give it to him. Hernandez. Hobson. Now Banks. Trying to run that clock down with 34 to go. And a foul called one and one. Upcoming for Bill Bin. Give the foul to Mark Cole. 
It's a three-point ball game. These are two big free throws by Dale Mark Cole, his fifth. Mark Cole fouls out. And that's five on, on Cole. So Vern Sloan loses his bulldog for this final 32 seconds as Mark Cole hits the bench. Ten points in the game for him. Couple over his average. Great hustle all night long. Really played a good game. And at least 10 floor bones. He was on the floor all night. Darren Pickering back into the ball game for Cole. Cole's twin brother Mike over there on the Bradley bench uh, injured his knee earlier this season. He was a big part of their offense too and cannot play for the rest of the year. Both those guys only juniors though. And Bill Beard. Short and run down by Bradley. A three-point shot will tie it. We're inside 30 seconds. Well, I think you take your time now and get a good three-point shot. He there did. It In and out of the rebound. Oh. That's a good shot too. That was a great shot. Matt Berlin, their number one three-point shooter, got one off without too much pressure, Kenny, and had it spin all the way in and out. Not much pressure. You had your best three-point shooter taking the shot. Couldn't ask for much more, Dan. The ball just wouldn't fall. So we'll send Banks back up to the free throw line. He's two lines and makes the steps up there today. He got that one, and that was big. Once again, Bradley will need the ball twice to have a chance to even this thing up. And only 20 seconds left to play. Number two for Banks. Steve in. Big free throws by Jarrell Banks, the senior. He's been very, very impressive tonight. Hulu Thomas, right by everybody, and oh, he grabbed him. He fouls to give, although you're very close to getting an intentional foul call on a play like that. He stuck both arms out and wrapped one around him. Let's see what he's saying. He's going for the basketball. He didn't want to give them a chance to get the three-point shot off, and he had a two fouls to give. Trouble getting it in, and here it comes to pick I'll foul him again before he shoots it. No, they don't, and here's a three-point try. And good by Burr. And immediately, Bradley Bourbon gets the timeout with 8.9 to go. See, I would have fouled him before he had a chance to shoot it because you had the foul to give. You had another team foul to give, so why not foul him before he gets the shot off? But this way, hey. Let's check the Bradley huddle now and see what Burr Sloan has up his sleeve. three-point shot by Matt Berlin that brought his team to it in two. Right, and see, I, I thought the Titans should have fouled before he had a chance to get that shot off because he had a, a foul to give. That's a big-time shot there, though, by Berlin. And we get another timeout called. Steve Gores and the Rockford Boylan Titans over there trying to set up their offense for this inbounds play. Let's see if we can catch... Uh, what Steve's got to say to his club. Johnny Hernandez to take the ball inbound the best on the pass shooters. <laughs> Put your best free throw shooters in. 
Hernandez a 60% free throw shooter. Darrell Banks at 72. As a team, they shoot 64. 8.9 seconds left, and here we go. They get Hernandez, an immediate foul. Cost them almost two seconds. Seven flat left in the game. And Johnny Hernandez will shoot the one and one. Big free throws. Also on 34, Stephen Thomas, that's his third. One and one for one. Tony Marcus, Stan, checks in for Bradley. Gandy back into the ball game. Here's Tim Hobson coming back on for Rockland Boylan. The big guys out there. One and one. If he makes them both, that might do it. First free throw, no good. Oh, Gandy rebound. Five seconds. Thomas stepped oh, away by good. Ben. And a foul called on Bill Ben. But they had a foul to give. Don't they? No. Sure they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Foul to give. Not a bad move Not by bad Bill move. Ben. Okay. No shot. No shot. Only 2.2 to go. I'm not so sure they didn't lose some time. Well, it, it, tie really went off quickly, didn't it? Bradley needs two to tie and three to win. 2.2 seconds left. They'll have it at midcourt. Zulu Thomas to toss it in. They come to Matt Berlin. His shot right on target, but short. Another terrific basketball game here in the quarterfinals at Champaign. A two-pointer. And Rockford Boylan wins for the 30th time this year. And we'll take a look at how it ended. The final shot to win it. Boy, it looked like it was on the mark. Boy, but just a little short. Check the Rockford bench. <laughs> They're playing on tomorrow. And for Steve Goers, that personal jinx here in the assembly hall is all over the fifth time was the charm for him as rockford boylan wins it by a final score of 49 to 47. joe passion down on the corner of the floor with johnny hernandez and the winning coach steve goers joe all right thanks very much dan let me reach over johnny hernandez for a minute to coach steve goers and sweating it out for the last minute getting that tie back on now looks good for the post game conference uh did you expect it to come down like this your players really seem to hold it together down the stretch well we i thought we did, we did hold it together down the stretch made some great plays and checked out but we didn't we didn't put the nails in the coffin joe we didn't make our free throws uh you know we make our free throws the last four minutes of the game it's a 10 12 point game and we kept on letting them back in and the bradley's credit they didn't give up hit a big three and got ahead of possession and everything, but we had fouls to give, and I told him the to fire out there, what, uh, what we call foul for fire, and uh, we did, and it's held up place so he can get uh, hit in the open court for a shot. We should have fired before the last three-pointer he took, you know, so, uh, but I'm proud of our kids because, uh, you know, they said we had a monkey on our back about not winning down here. Well, it was a gorilla to me, <laughs> and thing is off the back now. You got your W after all here at Assembly Hall, and Johnny, we talked about how everyone throwing their bodies all over the court. You were one of them. Really, I thought, played tremendous enthusiasm out there that helped out on both ends of the floor. Yeah, this is something we've been dreaming about all our life, you know, and we came down, we didn't have free throws at the end, and that, that's kind of disappointing. But we did the job, and uh, I'm happy that we won, but we're going to have to play a lot better than that. Okay, hold with me, John. We're going to go down and look at the monitor here, and you'll see that last foul. Explain it for us right here. This one? Oh, man, I couldn't believe it. I thought, I thought he got him. I thought he was going to make a layup, and I thought we were going to have a glorious win. But <laughs> he called the foul. They got the ball back, and they got a shot, but they missed it. Thank, thank God. All right, then we go back here, and we'll see the reaction of the team. And I think they were as shocked, Johnny, oh. as you were there. But then at the end, when the seconds stick down, you guys had your W in Assembly Hall. First thing I said, we got to play better than this. I was coming for joy that we won. The first thing I said is, real, we got to play better. Do our job. You're going to have a chance to we do that chance. tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Johnny Hernandez, a great effort. 12 points for him tonight and Steve Gore's got the gorilla off his back over there to a couple of monkeys at center court oh, <laughs> and Kenny and I owed you one with McReynolds oh my we'll get even with those guys won't we <laughs> oh man gorilla Terrific. okay great basketball game you think Johnny Hernandez will forget his senior season I don't think so 12 and 1 on the football team and now he's in the
quarterfinals, semifinals of the state. He played one heck of a basketball game. Well, a couple of terrific games that we've done so far today. The two-point game earlier on involving Proviso East and Collinsville and another two-pointer here, 49-47, the final score. As Bradley Bourbon A plays well but falls two points short uh, to Rockford Boylan. We'll step aside for a moment and return to the Assembly Hall in just a moment. Uh, one of your network sponsors, the Toyota Dealers of Illinois. Back in Champaign, the player of the game of Game 3 of the quarterfinals here, Johnny Hernandez. And it could have gone either way, Kenny. Uh, Tim Hobson and Michael Slaughter played well. Darrell Banks, a great game, too. But Johnny Hernandez, the player of the game, brought to you by American Airlines and American Eagle. Something special in the air. Well, you talk about something special in the air. Johnny Hernandez, this young man, can do everything, including putting up something special in the air. Three-pointer from behind the arc. This young man really played one well of a basketball game. He played an outstanding floor game, Dan, as well as a dozen points, but what was really impressive is Florida game all around. The young man will be an outstanding player at Eastern Illinois. Well, he had 12 points. Hobson also in double figures. Slaughter had eight, and Banks was in double figures as well. So nice balance for Rockford, even though they only had 49 points in the game. But they don't care what they scored. They wanted that W, <laughs> and they got it. Right now, let's check out the uh, final game stats brought to you by Milk. It does a body good, and by the people who produce milk, the dairy farm families of Illinois and Wisconsin. Well, take a look at the field goal percentage. Bradley, 46%. Boiling, only 35%. Look at the rebounding. That's pretty good. Even 32 to 31. 18 turnovers for Bradley. That could be the turning point of the game. Of course, only nine turnovers for the Titans of Rockford Boiling. So we've gotten three teams into the semifinals. One more game yet to go. It's uh, Stevenson High School up next against Peoria Richwoods. That should be a good one as well. A couple of high-powered teams with great records, uh, much as we've seen all day long here in the quarterfinal round in Champaign. Uh, Tom Stocker will be taking this seat in just a second, so we'll step aside again for a moment. Uh, one of your network sponsors is American Airlines and American Eagle.